Hello everyone and welcome back to New Horizons. So last episode we had a very successful trip to the moon and we got access to titanium. And not just access to titanium, in fact we fully automated- wait, <laughs> not fully automated. We are still wrestling with a bit of a processing problem right here, way too many resources unprocessed. So the really cool thing about titanium, we should have enough for the quest. The titanium quest also unlocks tier 4 extreme voltage. And you guys all know what that means, right? Extreme voltage means applied energistics. <laughs> we are getting ever closer to unlocking this mod. We are close. We are very close. I honestly cannot wait for applied energistics, but we have to make sure we are prepared for it. And when we eventually are able to obtain applied energistics, we want to place it in an optimal location. And this is not optimal right here. So our mission for today is to build a central hub on the base, a real anchor point that we can expand from. And that is all going to start here at X marks the spot. It's going to be quite the challenge because as it stands, I don't have everything figured out. So we're going to go through this together. And hopefully we can prove that this rocket silo was not a one-off. <laughs> hopefully we should be able to replicate its success because I really like this design. Minus the slimes, of course. Alright everyone, so now it's the next day for me. I've tried to do this segment a million times, so... <laughs> Excuse the abrupt cut here, but I've been very busy. Let me show you what all has changed. Hours and hours have been spent transforming this valley right here. It looks the same, right? <laughs> yes, it's exactly the same. Uh, so yeah, I might have gotten a bit carried away here uh, in the past day. I've been off for a full day in a creative world. And some plans have changed, actually. But instead of redoing the intro, we're just going to keep it in. Because this episode is going to be all about diving into my uh, crazy ideas, <laughs> mistakes and all. And we're just going to we're just going to see where this takes us. I think this might end up being a long video as well. So strap in, strap yourselves in for some craziness here. Some uh, deep dives into concept design on this valley. This is going to be a lot of fun. Hopefully I don't ramble too much. Oh, and you know what? Speaking of the rambling, a couple of episodes back, we actually did get the trophy, a few of you guys pointed out in the comments. Yeah, so we actually got it from a drop and then the chicken blew up. Some of you guys caught the frame, I don't know if I can find it in editing actually. I'm going to be very surprised if we actually get this. What are the chances we get it now? <gasps> Wait! <laughs> did we just get the trophy? It took me a while to realize- oh my goodness, we actually just got it. I do not believe that. I, there is no- I've killed so many chickens here. Look at- look at this. So the trophy and a feather inside an assembling machine gives us the potion flask. Seven minutes and six seconds of flight. And this thing is full creative flight, right? Oh yes, excellent. And according to the Thomonomicon, actually, the mantle of the raven that we're wearing apparently increases creative flight speed. Your speed while flying increases noticeably. Is this faster than usual? I feel like this is normal creative speed. Okay, let's test without. Oh yeah, that definitely is faster. Yeah, we're definitely getting a speed boost there. <laughs> Alright, well that was a happy start to the episode. Oh yeah, just to confirm, it does actually work inside the Thomic Restorer. I haven't actually tested this myself. It should, right? Yes, full durability, nice. Okay, so here's a question. What does this rocket silo look like? When we take this style and we apply it somewhere else in the base, how do we make things feel cohesive? Okay, so I don't think it looks anything like this. Yeah. <laughs> I have been extremely busy here trying to prototype this base. And I told myself actually I would just design that little room down there, the triangle, and then call it a day, move on with some progression today. And then one thing led to another and I ended up doing basically the full valley here. And I've just been throwing ideas at the wall to see what sticks, and many of the concepts just unfortunately are not sticking. There's a lot of things here which do need to be addressed. And there's some failed prototypes in the distance over there, you can ignore those. So yeah, it's safe to say that plans have changed here, that is for sure. We still have our silo down there, the original silo. And honestly, I was really tempted to rein in my ambition with this project. Because I realised, like, we're in creative here, right? I've installed World Edit as well, which gives us... Uh, immense creative control. Oh, I don't have it on right now. Yeah, World Edit can give you some immense power and instantly replace blocks, take blocks away. And then I remember like, wait a second, we have to actually do this in survival. So yeah, we have to be a bit careful with what we uh, what we try to plan out here. 
And speaking of the planning actually, I really would like to extend my thanks to Extra Cool Cat on YouTube. He has given me a lot of his time and ideas on this concept design. And so for that, I really want to thank him. Definitely go check out his channel. I'll make sure to link it in the description. He is a really great builder, much better than I am. <laughs> uh, so yeah, I've learned a lot of really valuable things from him actually. And also as one comment I received put it, I would rather see you try something so big that no one has ever attempted anything like it before just to fail, rather than doing it the normal safe cookie cutter way. And we ain't cookie cutter here. And honestly, I couldn't agree more, and that's exactly what we're doing here. We are taking a massive risk with this. I am taking a massive risk. And most creative risks don't ever actually work out, so we might end up with a fail here, but I, honestly, you guys really wanted to see... We are underneath here. You guys really wanted to see my thought process throughout all of this, so that's exactly what we're going to do. I don't know where this is going to take us, this episode, but you know what? I think it's going to be a fun, uh, a bit of a different episode. There's going to be a lot of Gregan in the future, that's for sure. <laughs> but not often do we get a, a chance to uh, really dive into concept design like this. So, you know what? Let's jump into this. Starting off with some of the problems here. I think there is a lot of em empty space. And empty space is good. It makes it feel really grand, really big. And by the way, look at the map view. Look at this. This is, this is so kind of turned into some sort of evil base, and I love it. <laughs> Are we just going to embrace the villain look? I'm not sure. But before we stress about any of the details, we have to make sure the shape is correct. And honestly, I think this isn't really doing it for me. So I decided to start over. I got an, a fresh copy of the world at episode 24. And I started off a little bit differently this time. This time around, I wanted to make sure it was a bit more staggered on the way down into the silo. So once again, using world edit, I uh, I did some magic. <laughs> Used the brush tool, the wand tool. I made a couple of cylinders and we ended up with this. And this time, since the cylinders went all the way around, I wanted to make sure we still kept the valley open and clear. All right, in terms of the shape, I think this way is much more appealing, much more usable. And it also doesn't look anywhere near as evil as it did before, which may or may not change. And also ignore the fact that there's diamond blocks here, we're not actually going to use diamond blocks of course. It's just to make a schematic a little bit easier and copy it into the main world. But yeah, this is a much better start than we had previously. Okay, so next we want to think about this area over here. How do we connect this in? And not, do we keep the pathway along this level? And I think the answer to that is no. What I would like to do is come back into the original world, the one that looks evil and take this wall design right here, which I really like, over to this world, which we just created. So I have a schematic of it. I'm sure there's a way to do this with world edit, but I don't know how to do that. So <laughs> let me get this in place. The only thing is these architecture blocks, we'll have to place those manually. And there's also actually a config setting within Schematica, which one of you guys commented about. I think it's under this printer option and then placement delay. Yeah, and place instantly. I think this insta builds it basically. Oh yeah. Nice. <laughs> oh yeah, look at this. I still wish there was a way to do this with World Edit, and I'm sure there is. But yeah, if only we get this luxury in survival, which is not going to happen. I think there's going to be several live streams to get all of this built, which I'm looking forward to actually. I really like building. Aha, so we have the wall in place, and the path is a little bit lower than what we had originally. And I actually like this. I think we're going to keep the path at this level. And we're also going to dig out a room underneath here, somehow accessible by this main area up here. And this path will extend all the way over to the rocket silo. And you may also be curious as to what material this is. Well, I noticed just after coming back from the moon, there is this very strange effect on the corp block, viewable at some specific angles. And I think it shows up really badly in the video, actually. Like over there, you see that? It's fine for the silo, but I think in all the other areas of the base, we want to think of some sort of alternative. So then I thought, you know what, why not just bring the moon to us? Look at this, moon rock is almost the perfect material here for us. It goes almost perfectly with concrete. So this is our new flooring. We also use the concrete for support and sort of an accent block, which we'll talk about later on. But yeah, let me extend this path and develop this concept a little bit further. I'm trying to really follow my own advice. People always ask me how I build bases. And I always say plan the walkways first. Walkways and pathways, even though realistically we're going to be flying everywhere. 
It's still a good idea, I think, to build paths everywhere and have it accessible on foot. And also, this is New Horizons, we need to start thinking about some functionality. So I set up Applied Energistics here in the middle. It seems like it's an appropriate place, very central location. Remember, we, had, we do have to keep the rocket silo free, since we, we have to be able to fly rockets through this thing. This feels like a, actually an even better place because we're going to have machine rooms off on the left and the right hand side. And I made sure it's all within one chunk as well. We also have to think about wiring and in a few different packs it's worked out very well to have the wiring follow the main path. So that is a standard I think we'll establish here again. And then also some power cables will accompany this. I was also thinking about adding in some catwalks to follow the main paths. Just as like a little maintenance access which could be pretty cool. So yeah, we got the path extended that that connects into the rocket silo. And I've extended it up some of the detailing. The detailing is something I'll do later. But we also have another catwalk at this level. And this is probably going to be maintenance access into all the tunnels, which I'm about to dig. It's probably going to go through here. And then from this doorway, it's probably going to go up some stairs. And the main machine rooms will be somewhere over this level, since we'll also have some doors over on this side. And that will continue all of the way around the cylinder. We have this tunnel which already exists. And then I dug an extra one over here to connect to the main tunnel. This is also something that exists. And in between these two points is where we're going to put the majority of the chemical lines. Over here somewhere, it's going to be a giant room. But yeah, the main objective here today is to try to get all the paths in place. I'm going to now do a, a bit more development and try to get everything connected together. And then we're going to take a look at some of the more fine details that we're going to apply moving forward. I mean, obviously, this is still the creative world. We do have to rebuild this in survival. So we don't want to do too many of the details. Uh, a lot of that we can figure out once we get there. But like, for example, this little trim on the end, like as long as we establish that we can do this as a repeating pattern. And yeah, maybe even extend the color along if we're going for this red. Just little things like that, adding little lips on the, on the walls can really make all the difference, plus the stone brick. And it really helps to break up the wall. And I think this is all going to come together eventually. If we can get all the blocks to do this, because that is the next... <laughs> that is the next trouble that we have to deal with. The block collection, this is already hundreds of thousands of mist. And, and I'm just about to add more as well. So uh, yeah, let me do a bit more work here and then I'll come back with another update. Alright, so we have a few more details in this build, and I told myself I wasn't going to do details, but man, I'm just, I'm just addicted to this. <laughs> and we've made what appears to be a keyhole. Uh, is that going to be the new name for this base? The keyhole? I don't know. That's kind of what it's turned out to be. <laughs> yeah, I also copied over the rings, which we uh, had in the previous world. I really like these, actually. I think it has just some extra, it's like a discount stargate, which we'll never actually craft, so it's nice to have a stargate in the world. I added in some corp in the middle of the paths. I'm not sure how I feel about it on the rings, but definitely down here, I think it helps us. It's just a little extra detail. I'm not entirely sold on this concrete, even though it follows the same design language as the rings. It may end up being a little bit too busy here. There's also basalt on the bottom, which I definitely like. That just helps to break it away from the floor. Oh yeah, and of course the diamond has all been replaced. I really like this moon rock, actually. So yeah, even though I'm not a huge fan of the concrete, it's going to stay in the schematic, which is the next thing I'd like to do, actually, at this point. Take a schematic. And having the high contrast of the concrete should help it, should help us when we go to copy it over to survival. It's going to make it easy to tell where the outline is. Even if this is off by one block, it's going to be highly noticeable. So I want to ensure that doesn't happen when we dig out this place in survival. Oh yeah, and of course we have the accent color. We're going to experiment with color later. For now, I've went with red to bring it back to the evil look, <laughs> which I think I'm going to embrace here, actually. I think we're going to make this an evil base. I opened up this bridge. This used to be filled with mist, but I think a floating bridge here helps to give it some character. I don't know, I'm, I kind of like this, actually. Anyways, this schematic, we have to select both points, or should we just do the whole, the whole thing? Hmm... I think, no, I think we do the circle first. So yeah, red point in this corner. I wish there was a way to preview, is there not a... Oh, there we go. 
It doesn't really matter if we take a little extra in the schematic, since of course it's not going to copy it, we still have to build it in survival, and we're not going to use world edit of course. But it will be able to tell us which block should be where. Okay, so that should have selected both corners, you can see a green outline, a thin green outline over here. That should have went all the way around and all the way down. We'll save this as dig2, and just to test, this should import again. This is going to be a huge sch oh yeah. <laughs> that is a huge schematic. Wow, look at this thing. That is insane. Can you imagine moving this and building it elsewhere? Oh, you know what I also noticed? We're, we're missing a few blocks of ism over here. But I think as long as we have the concrete in place, it should be okay. Yeah, it should be fine. We may as well also grab one of the straight section as well. So like from here-ish. I've noticed that you have to stand like diagonally back from it. And it places it like one block diagonal to you. It's weird, I, I don't know how it works. So here and then somewhere in a corner down here. I'm gonna call this keyhole one. And just to double check, we'll make sure we import this one. Oh, and this time we clipped the rings. Uh, I think we definitely wanna grab those. L yeah, let me fix that one. Okay, you know what? I think I might have just had an idea. So we need a method of transporting cables vertically, right? Because all we have right now is this flat path, which is fine. It's a way to transport cables along this sort of axis. But some of our machine rooms will be above here, right? We're going to have them on multiple levels. And I was thinking maybe we add some sort of a, I don't know, like a cable tunnel that goes vertically this way. And that also gives us a way to add some support pillars and break up the wall. So we can reinforce this with some basalt bricks, for example. Maybe even carry the theme of the accent in the back. And we can do it like what we have in the rocket silo, where we have tinted glass in the front. Somehow try to give it some depth. And then it's going to probably be 3x3 three three interior to run the wires. That does mean we have to divert the path around. But we could do it where there's like a, a pillar that goes through. And then perhaps we extend this out so that it's three blocks on each side. So it goes into the wall three blocks here, and same on the other side. Sometimes you just get these ideas and you you, <laughs> you have to get them on paper somehow. So uh, I just thought I would... Yeah, let's see where this is going to take us, actually. And then obviously this will have to be closed off. Because the wire has to come through the floor here. The other thing we have to pay attention to, and the specific reason why it's here, is because the chunk boundary is there. So you guys have noticed all the pink blocks which we've had around? These mark the edges of the chunk and then also the middle of the chunk. We've had these in place for quite a while, actually. So we want to stick to that, and this is going to be in the center of the chunk, here, where the red block is. And by the way, all of this is chunk aligned. That's really what takes the longest with this type of build, <laughs> is to make sure it's all aligned with each other. So, like, this is all in the center of the chunk. Everything lines up perfectly, and I love it. It's so satisfying. But yeah, let me develop this idea a bit further. We have our guiding light. <laughs> Applied energistics. I could actually do this all day, but I think we're approximating something that I'm almost happy with here. And we extended along the catwalk. I'll have to copy it over. It should be a very simple task here with world edit. Select the first point. Select the second point up here. Make sure you are in position when you copy it. So it's relative to where you're standing. So if we stand like here, for example. Slash copy. Stand over on the other side, on the opposite side of the controller. And then we want to flip the selection. And then paste. Hopefully. Aha! That looks, that looks spot on, actually. <laughs> I did not expect that to work. It is actually spot on, right? Like, these are all aligned? Yeah. Wow, would you look at that? I've only been using World Edit for like a day. And the last time I used this, I, last time I used World Edit was like 2014. It was way, way back. Oh yeah, this is starting to really take shape now. This is awesome. Oh, the architecture blocks didn't copy correctly though. That's unfortunate. Yeah, I think we want to try and limit how much we put in in the creative world for that reason. I also have no idea how interesting this is actually going to be. But you know, it's all part of the process. I was considering just cutting out all of the creative world stuff since it's not technically part of the Let's Play. But you know, I feel like this is part, this is definitely part of the game or part of our strategy to get to where we want to be. Building on this type of a scale does definitely require a lot of planning. So I thought I would take you guys along with the journey. That's what that's really what the series is all about, right? We're we're going to learn together. 
And just remember, I am no expert here. <laughs> I am. This is a very extended building with three, but um, yeah, I'm definitely no expert here. All right, so another day has passed. Several more hours of development on this base. And man, I'm, I feel like I'm really starting to get enthusiastic about this again. <laughs> Which I will definitely admit I lost there for a second. But you know, I really wanted this just to be such an epic base and I think we've really captured this feeling. So I've been working on this command center right here. Check this out. <laughs> this is awesome, don't you think? Obviously unfinished, right? We can probably finish most of it in survival, which is something I want to do today. Wait, not finish it. I don't think we're going to finish this today. It can never truly be finished, right? We're always going to be working on this. But I do want to get this, this control center built today in survival. But yeah, look at this. We're going to have our AE terminals here, disk drives. We are also going to have a storage room underneath here with a bunch of drawers for bulk storage. In terms of the other functional things we want in here, I really wanted this just to be a nice, clean control center, command center. So most of the functionality is going to be through here and on the opposite side as well. I also wanted to tie this in somehow with the keyhole, which I guess is going to be its name now until, uh, <laughs> until we come up with something better. But yeah, I got this tied in over here, which I really like. It, it makes it all feel like one cohesive build, which is the question that we asked ourselves at the beginning of the episode. How do we make this all feel cohesive? I think we're starting to approach the answer here. <laughs> so yeah, I wanted to follow the same design language. We got the uh, stone brick copied over and all of this all lines up. It took a while to get all these stripes lined up here, but yeah, I tried to keep it in line with uh, the cylinder that we established. So that continues, the accent color continues all the way down. And I didn't want this too closed off. I want it to be relatively open so that we can see through. I may close off this section here, but definitely this one down here, we want to be as open as possible. I was considering putting tinted glass in the space, but uh, maybe it could just be a balcony like here, or perhaps some forge micro blocks. Just little details like that we can work out in survival, as I keep mentioning. <laughs> and I'm, I'm itching to start building this thing, but man, it's going to be tedious. Because if you remember what it looked like before, we have a lot to dig out in this place. But yeah, I, I also extended out this concrete to give it full support all the way up. And I added this little um, slab underneath. And that is the same sort of thing we have in the rocket silo, actually. And it might be something I do over here as well. But yeah, inside the rocket silo, we have this little lip underneath of concrete, which I think actually works out quite well. I done that on the catwalks over here just to connect these two pillars. Again, on the accent color, I'm really not sure about the red. And I feel like that is something we have to decide on. So you know what? Maybe we should try it all in blue. Or maybe we try a bunch of different colors. It should be easy with world edit. Let me select the two points here. So this should be possible with the replace command. So we need to take the block ID of the one we want to replace, in this case ism, which is 231110. And then also the mist, which we want to replace with, and that is 23189. Okay, then it's going to be slash replace the first number with the second number. This should change everything to blue. Oh, wow. Wow, look at this thing. That is a huge difference. I didn't think it would change it this much, but yeah, it's no longer an evil base. <laughs> we are now the good guys, I guess. That's crazy. I, I think I actually do prefer the rings in blue though, right? Maybe we can undo just to check the before and after. Or actually, the red is kind of nice as well. I don't know. What do you guys think? Should we go red or should we go blue? Maybe just to be thorough, we should test orange. 23185. This should replace with orange. Oh no, because we're, now we're changing a different thing, right? So we have to change this first. This should replace with orange. There we go. Yeah, that I don't like too much. It clashes too much with the canyon. It looks too much like orange stained clay. Yeah, orange is definitely a no-go. Just out of curiosity, there is a different blue here. That's nowhere near as saturated. I don't think I like that as much though. It's a cool color. This is ism. This is the blue ism. Yeah, it's definitely either going to be this blue, which is so much better. Yeah, you can instantly tell the difference. Either this blue or the red. Leave your suggestions in the comments section. And if you guys have any other suggestions, by the way, you may have been inspired by what you've seen in this video. Maybe you guys have some ideas I just didn't even think about. 
and I'm, I'm, I'm very open to ideas at this point still. Anyways, with this all established, I think it's time we switch worlds right now. I'm going to take a schematic of all, all the things we've built. And this should be enough to get cracking with. I'm really curious on the material cost for all this. Actually, there is one thing I want to show you guys. This original copy of the world. Yeah, this right here is the original version of the command center. And this thing I built before I even prototyped any of the rest of the valley, actually. I started with this and I realized I wasn't happy with it. This is definitely much smaller in size and scale which uh, I don't think is appropriate for the size of the valley we ended up with. But yeah, I just want to say, like, if you guys are struggling with base design, as I have, <laughs> don't get me wrong, this is not easy to do. The best thing you can do is just take a break and stick with it. Just stick with it and make it work, like what we've done here. <laughs> you can never truly fail if you don't give up. So back to reality, we have a literal mountain to move here. Wow, look at this thing. <laughs> yep, and this is our starting point. It feels like we're going really, really far back in time here. But this is the reality, we are in survival again. And I'm too used to being in creative now. <laughs> I mean, we do have creative flight, that's the nice thing. Yeah, I guess the first thing to do now that we have the schematic is start digging. And in the meantime, I'm going to start to create a bunch of mist blocks. And also, since we're moving into a new area, before I started prototyping ideas for the valley, I did actually spend some time in the main base here. And I removed every single tor- well, ignore those ones down there, that still has to be finished. <laughs> in all of these areas though, I removed all of the torches. And I even done some work underneath here, just to clean it up. It was looking a little bit rugged, some of the walls were missing. I cleaned up all this texture around the smeltery as well. Just tiny little things to make it feel a bit more complete than it was. Yeah, even up here next to our clean room, I got all these walls exchanged with mist. It's looking a lot cleaner now. Through here as well. Anyways, we have got a lot of digging to do this episode still. Yeah, and also a lot of blocks to place. I suspect it's going to be a couple thousand blocks. Ah, 1300 mist, that isn't too bad. 800 moon rock. The main thing though is trying to get it all dug out. That's and lined up perfectly. That's going to be the, the trickiest part of all this. Alright, so the blocks we're carrying is the last pieces of mist. We are basically out of stuff to build anymore. We did manage to get this command center. Look at this. Oh, this is actually feeling real now. This feels real. Okay, not quite as impressive with the preview off, but uh, you know, we're getting there. We're getting there very slowly. I'm making a start here on digging out the walls because this is a few blocks uh, inset into the wall. But again, we don't have any blocks to actually finish this thing. We might be able to install the rings, but again, I don't really know what color that's going to be yet. I think I might wait on you guys, uh, given your input. I didn't add any of the ism on here, the stripes, the accent colors here. But yeah, look at this thing. It's... <laughs> I like it. I like it a lot, actually. And oh my goodness, the mobs have been everywhere. I had to light this place up like crazy with torches, which obviously isn't ideal. Uh, we do have to find some solution for lighting. Uh, so I mentioned that I move, I remove the torches from this place, right? Things aren't spawning here. There's no, uh, there's no magic going on. Although there is options for magic, but the method I actually went for is painted glowstone. Let's see if we can find it in the floor here. I think it's this one. Yes. 
Painted Glowstone from an Ender.io. You can basically mimic any sort of block you want, in this case concrete, add some glowstone, which we should have. I did actually go to collect some glowstone from the nether. One of equal trade, by the way, for that is excellent. <laughs> that was a really fun tip. I didn't uh, think about that before, actually. Yes, we have over a stack here of blocks. And the one of equal trade does actually give you dust, so you still have to compress it. But yeah, you can paint glowstone, and this block here that you get emits a full, I think it's a full 15 light level equivalent to glowstone so yeah i think that's definitely something we use over here oh this looks way different without night vision on oh yeah <laughs> oh yeah that's gonna look awesome if we strategically place the light in oh that's gonna be awesome especially down there where it gets really dark oh yes i am liking this a lot <laughs> i'm really excited about this and if you guys want to watch me build this actually we're gonna have a live stream very soon look out for the schedule on the channel but this also feels like an appropriate place to wrap up the episode Again, I would love to hear your guys' thoughts on this. Hopefully you get a sense of what we're going for here. I really wanted to plan long-term with this project. And really, yeah, planning is really fun, but uh, actually following through on your plans <laughs> and actually executing is a whole different ball game. So yeah, I'm going to try to keep doing as much as I can between episodes. And then we have some progression to catch up on. Oh, I guess I, we had some missed here. Anyways, from me for now, from the keyhole, <laughs> right, we need suggestions on names as well. From the keyhole, thank you guys so much for watching. I appreciate your patience on this episode. Have an amazing day, and I'll see you all in the next episode of New Horizons.